Hi folks, Slick Slices here. Last time we were out, we looked at this. Um, it's sort of, I was going to say, it's not the original, but it's in the original form of the, you know, the black cat knife, the Kaiser Wilhelm Messer, um, Mercator knife, as it's prob probably, uh, properly now. Today I want to look at, I'm actually going to look at two versions, two other versions of it. Um, no point in doing one for each of them because it's, uh, there's not a lot to show about the the next one, um, but we'll see where we go for there. So that's the let's see the the black cat knife. Now, as I said, as I said in the last video, it's available in a number of finishes. One of which is brass. I quite like brass, so I have a brass one. Now, um, in terms of uh, description of the knife, there's not a lot to say that's different. Obviously, it's brass rather than steel. Um, that's the the most obvious thing that springs to mind. The other thing is that uh, the design on it is the other way up. Um, normally on shields on knives, when they're closed, they usually the back of the 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 back of the knife is at the bottom, and uh, whatever wording is on the shield is is that way up. This um, brass one, it's the other way. It's the other way up, which actually I think is a more logical way to put it. Um, because once it's open um, and the knife is in your hand, um, if you're right-handed, I'm, I'm not, and the knife is this way up and the logo shield is upside down, which is a bit odd to me, but that is the way that almost all knives are. This one, of course, the uh, shield is the, is the right way up if you're holding it right-handed, which is... I suppose quite nice. Again, you've got the Mercator Germany on the spine. It's just folded over a bit of, in this case, I say brass as opposed to steel. Slightly heavier gauge than the steel, um, presumably because brass is just that bit softer. And again, you've got the lanyard ring on bale, uh, Mercator, Germany Solingen. So it's pretty much exactly the same and it suffers from the same problems as all of these knives uh, do in terms of uh, length in that we've got a three and three eighths we've got a cutting edge of three and an eighth um, and of course they're locking which means that carrying them in the UK is uh, problematic to say the least um, so what do you do if you are in the UK and you want to carry one of these well there is a UK friendly version um, so just remind me, one of the things I don't like about the bales is that if you flick them across like that, when you shut the blade, there's a chance you either damage the bale or damage the edge of your knife. Now, so what's this? what makes this one different? Um, it's again, it's brass, it's still got the Mercator Germany on the reverse. There's a much stiffer action, but again, you've got your... Mercator, Mercator stainless. So it's a stainless one. Solingen Germany on the other side. The very obvious difference though, it's that much smaller. We have here the blade itself is bang on the three inches, the cutting edge is two and three quarters. But the other big difference is that this doesn't have a uh, lock back. This is a, uh, a slip joint. Now it has a, it just has a spring in right in the back of, you should be able to see that right spring just in the back of the handle there. Um, that spring is affixed with this pivot here, with this uh, rivet here as its pivot. So it's very much just like a, an, any other um, slip joint. There is a, a slight difference in the, in the, the way the spring, um, normally this, the pivot pin here is the fulcrum. Um, and it, it, the spring extends back past that, whereas here you the spring 
it's actually only comes from the pivot forward. So you've got a curved piece of steel pointing up uh, towards the opening that acts as the, um, the spring and the back of the handle acts as the fulcrum. Now, this is not an uncommon way of making a slip joint. A lot of um, really cheap uh, budget knives uh, can be like this. Sometimes they'll have uh, plastic molded over the outside. Now, the other downside to this one is that it's just that bit smaller. And if you've got hands my size, this is okay in your hand, but This is a hundred times better. That's just a good size in my hand. Whereas this one is, it's okay, but it's just a little bit too small. And in terms of price, I think this one is at least as expensive as this one, uh, which, you know, there's no logic to that, except presumably it must be something to do with the volume of manufacture. Uh, plus, of course, they had to redesign and retool to make this, Whereas, you know, these ones have been made since time immemorial. Uh, well, since 1871, I believe, is when they uh, came out on or before 1871. So, uh, that's the end of my little family of otter knives. Um, but uh, this one is at least is, is a carryable, usable knife in the UK. Uh, these two, I think... Uh, are they look they look simple and they look crude but they're actually really quite good and useful uh, knives that um i would like to be able to carry if only i could but i say that one is slightly too big and um two they've got that uh, lock which causes an issue but uh they're also about the same size as the uh, three rivet knife which actually if I could carry one of the any of these this would probably be the one that I would like to carry because I think it's the smartest looking of them but these are quite slim in the pocket so that, that's an advantage anyway there we are that's us done with uh, otters for just now we'll be moving on I think we're going to go and look at some more Taylor's eyewitness knives next but um, in the meantime if you like this stuff please give it a thumbs up and if you would like to see more then please uh, remember to subscribe and to ring the notification bell if you don't ring the bell you you won't get notifications of the next ones that come up so thank you for watching bye folks